Hi people, Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here, and today in my second video in my series for the Great Guitar Build Off, I'm focusing on the construction of the body. Well, welcome back. If you watched the first video in this series, focused on the design of the guitar, you would know that I've worked with Dr. Gothic to design a guitar that fits around the concept for his new futuristic album. It's a Flying V inspired, Guitar covered in crystals. It's meant to look a bit futuristic. It reminds me of the Fortress of Solitude. And in fact, Dr. Gothic has named it the Staff of Light. Now in this video behind me, you can see that I've got over there a printout of what the back of the guitar should look like. And I've blown that up to scale. I'm using it to mark out on what was a Telecaster body where the acrylic rods that I'm going to embed are. Now, if you've watched other builds by people on the Great Guitar Build-Off competition this year, you'll see a lot of absolutely amazing master woodworkers. And that is not what you're going to see in this build. I am an artist. I trained as an artist, I studied art in fact at university, and for many years since I've taught art. I've taught art at universities, I work in museums and galleries, and I've been very privileged to be able to work with community groups all over England. I go into prisons, hospitals and hospices working with people, I go into schools and community groups, and a lot of what we do is we talk about art, we talk about the process of art and we make things. And what I'm interested in is taking visions and making them real, taking Dr. Gothic's idea, making it real, taking my clients' ideas and bringing them to life. And part of my process is as I'm making, I make decisions as I go along. So I have a rough idea of where I'm going. If you've seen the design video, you'll see the image at the end, that orange background image showing what we think the guitar will look like. But actually, things change. I keep sending photos to Dr. Gothic throughout deciding what should happen. In the clips behind me now, I'm cutting and polishing and positioning the acrylic rods. Now, when I carved those initial slots, I knew roughly where things are going, but things did change as we went along. To make sure the acrylic was ready before it went in, I had to go through three different grades of sandpaper, getting finer each time to make sure the surface was really shiny. And then where it was going to be embedded against the wood, I didn't want the wood to show through. So here I am painting in white the surfaces that are going to go against the guitar. I've marked out exactly the portion that's going to be covered and the portion that needs to be transparent. Then those get glued in. I've used a bit of CA glue to hold them in place, super glue. And then I'm using wood filler to fill in the spaces. So like I said before, not master woodworking. I didn't carve the wood exactly to fit the slots because I didn't know exactly how they were going to fit and if I was going to pull them out and slightly change them as they went along. The filler is brilliant because I can put it in, I can easily sand everything smooth and then I can keep working on it if I need to. So here's some images of the guitar at the state when the acrylic's gone in. It's had some of the white painted behind it to conceal the wood where it's going. Then the filler put in and sanded more or less flat. Then with milliput, which is a two-part epoxy, it's basically like plasticine. You mix the two parts together and over time it goes hard. I normally leave it 24 hours to completely harden, but it actually doesn't leave quite that long. But the advantage of the milliput is I can fill up any gaps, but I can also carve and shape it just like I learned when I studied sculpture at college, just like I teach people when we think about sculpture. I'm building up the shape as I go along. I'm able to step back, see what I want to do and easily make changes. When the mini putt hardens, I then can then sand it smooth. And here I am using cabinet scrapers to scrape them smooth as well. Mini putt is absolutely great for this. I use it quite a lot in my guitar builds. Now here I am cutting out bits of mirrored acrylic to put into place around those shards that we've seen. So some of them are stuck directly onto the acrylic rod and some of them overlap very slightly with bits of wood. I'm actually going to be putting more on at a later stage, but because I know this guitar is going to look relict, I'm not that worried about putting some on early because I want some of these surfaces not to be highly polished. I want some of them to look a bit tarnished. Now, the way I marked out where the mirror was going to go onto the body involved simply putting down masking tape and drawing onto it. 
Now, just before I actually make the acrylic shapes, I'm routing some holes in two pieces for the pickups. And then I simply cut the shapes out of the masking tape, stick them over the pickup hole that I've just made on the acrylic, and I know exactly the shape I'm then gonna cut the acrylic to fit the space I want. And this is the process I go through for all of the parts that are gonna be acrylic mirror. Cutting out the shapes that I marked out on the masking tape, sticking it onto the acrylic mirror, cutting the acrylic mirror, I'm doing that off camera on my band saw, sanding it so the edges are perfect, and then just looking once again at one of the pickup covers. Once I've got the shape cut, I can mark it back into the wood and chisel the shape out to slot the acrylic in. So here that's exactly what I'm doing with all of those pieces and using Milliput just to surround the edges to make sure it fills in perfectly. Then I go back to using the cabinet scrapers and the sandpaper to make sure it's totally smooth. The next stage is to drill all the holes that needed through the body. I've routed the edges at a 45 degree chamfer, which I think works really well with the crystals. And then just using my cabinet scrapers and sandpaper just to make sure it's totally smooth. Now it's time to drill the through body ferrules. Dr. Gothic said he wanted the through string guitar body. So I've screwed the bridge plate on top. I'm drilling my holes for the two outer holes, the two outer strings, the E's, all the way through the body. And then using my depth stop on my drill, the middle holes, I'm just drilling halfway through the body. Then turn the guitar over, re-screw the back plate on so the outer holes match up and drill the middle holes through the body again. This time they're only going halfway and they're meeting up with the other ones. And this means that the holes are perfectly lined up. Now for the back where the ferrules come through, I've actually decided to make them come through on a piece of the mirrored acrylic again. So I'm using the bridge to line up where the holes are gonna be. Then I can cut the mirrored acrylic to look like I want it to. Using two drill bits, I'm putting that in place, marking around it, cutting and chiseling out just like I did on those other mirrored acrylic shards over the body, and then I can embed it in place. So actually I want it to be quite deep, so I'm using my Forstner bits to make sure the hole is deep before I use the chisel to neaten it up. Here's, these are the ferrules I'm using. They're the ones normally decided, designed for top mounts because I wanted the balls of the string to show on the back on this one. I'm using my step drill to widen the holes ready for the ferrules on that mirrored part. And then once it's glued in place, I can surround the edge with the milli putt to make it all really neat again. As I said before, not master woodworking, more of a kind of artist, more of an artist approach to it, where it's see what happens as we go along. Also, I really love using milli putt because it does remind me of sculpting, using my hands directly on the materials in a way that not quite doing with chisels. Now I can drill the holes just deep enough for the ferrules to slot in and then drop the ferrules in with a bit of CA glue, super glue, to hold them in place. I'm actually going to put some more shattered mirror around this later, but for now I'm leaving it like this because I want to have a finish where some is tarnished and some is really clean. So some of it's going on after the varnishing process. Now for making the control cavity cover, it's almost exactly the same process. So I won't explain it too much, but here you can see the making of in process. As I said in my video about designing this guitar, I've got roughly 20 hours worth of footage. So by doing multi-screen like this, I'm really narrowing it down. And I don't want to waffle on too much, so I'm trying to keep it nice and short. All of these videos will be 10 to 15 minutes. But let's see what the guitar looks like at this stage.
thanks for watching this second video in my series of building the Staff of Light guitar for the Great Guitar Build-Off. The first one was the design process. This was building the body. The next one is all about painting and relicking. Then I've got one very specifically about the neck build. I'm gonna have one about assembling it all together, including the electronics. And then a final showcase video in which I show off the finished guitar. Although there are pictures also coming up on my Instagram, so stay tuned for them. Until next time, happy strumming.